Hi there, and welcome to another episode of Psychic Diaries. I'm Michael Lamport. I'm the producer and uh, the um, narrator of the psychic show Rescue Mediums. And with me um, on this Psychic Diaries is the uh, host of Rescue Mediums and uh, Jackie Dennison. And uh, she is also the co-owner of the Feathers Academy of Clairvoyant Mediumship in uh, Northwich, England. And we're lucky today to have with us Mr. Steve Furlong, who uh, is the other co-owner of Feathers Academy. And he's uh, also a clairvoyant medium amongst many, many other things. Um, and it's great to have him here. And today what we're gonna be talking about is uh, astral travel. Um, so, uh, I guess we could just get right into it. And so Steve, what, uh, in a nutshell, what is astral traveling? Well, um, astral travel is that is when you separate the astral body from the physical body. And, uh, sometimes it's called, uh, etheric traveling. Sometimes it's called astral traveling, but it's when you, you your astral body separates from your physical body and travels. Uh, within time and space uh, on its own so uh, there, there are three main types um, one spontaneous where sometimes people don't intend to uh, to separate their astral body and it just happens spontaneously this happens sometimes when when there's a traumatic event so if there's an accident or somebody has something that's, that's really frightening and they end up looking at themselves in the situation and that's a spontaneous uh, astral separation uh, then there's uh, an unconscious one, which which tends to happen when people are asleep or as they're dropping off to sleep, and it, it they, they separate uh, unconsciously, where the, the, there's no there's no effort involved at that in that at all. Um, and then there's meditative, which is is sort of um, I I sort of call it uh, doing it on purpose, so it's intending to do it rather than doing it by accident. So that that involves a, a meditative technique where where you relax your body and go through a process where you, you allow the energy to start to flow and start to build. And then you start to lift your astral body out of, out of yourself. And then you can travel to, to wherever it is you, you, you intend to go. The, the, the second one where you, you, you're in like dream state and you come out of, you come out of your body in dream state. Yeah. Um, is that when you come back in and you sort of, you come, you know, you, you sort of jolt yourself awake? Yeah, sometimes when you when you feel as if you've fallen into yourself and you just go, oh, I, don't, I don't know what that is. That's that sort of you you've you've sort of separated, and then your body's realised that you've separated, and then it's jolted back into itself. Mm. So it, um, we we when you talk to people and they, they say, well, I've never experienced astral separation, then you you describe that process to them, you know, where you do you feel that falling back into your body and they go, Oh yeah, I do that all the time. So you go, well, that's yeah. the first step on the astral separation. So you're already doing it. And some people say, well, you know, when I dream and, and I look and I turn around and I'm looking at myself in the bed and that, that's, a, that's normally an unconscious separation where they, mm -hmm. they've just done it subconsciously and just, just allowed themselves to look, to view themselves lying on the bed. And then if they realize what's happening, Sometimes what happens then is that is they get frightened and it, it just snaps them back in straight away like that because the, the, the fear factor, it's almost that's like an elastic band and fires you back into yourself very quickly, which mm. is sometimes... But it's not dangerous, is it? No, I, I mean, you're always... Uh, the, the, there's, a, there's an element of obviously fear which makes your heart race a little bit, but I the, don't the, think there's any, any physical risk to you. Hmm. So you couldn't, you couldn't um, not come back into your body. <laughs> you know, no. I've got this image yeah. of, you know, somebody hovering there like this, <laughs> waiting that's, to that's get a dream. Question that, yeah, that's the question that probably comes up most is that, that when people say, oh, well, I'm frightened I might get stuck there. Or I might not be able to find my way back, you know, if I go somewhere else. Well, there's, there's like, there's an invisible cord, like a silver cord of energy connecting your astral body to your physical body at all times. You can't sever that. The only time it ever uh, disconnects is when uh, the the body, pa you know, the person passes away, and then the, the astral body then is allowed to, to travel. But the, but whilst you're still alive, that there's always that connection. So you can't lose your way back because it will 
will automatically bring you back to where your physical body is. Mm. Well, it reminds me of um, a song from um, the Moody Blues uh, a few years ago uh, called Timothy Leary's Dead. No, 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 he's outside looking in. He'll fly his astral plane into trips across the bay and take you back the same day, Timothy Leary. <laughs> that, that's the first that's time I've ever heard, heard, heard that one. Though. I'm far too young, you no. see. That's what it is. <laughs> but, you know, Steve, that's a bit like your experience, isn't it? Because I know about your first experience with astral travel, because we talked about it, this it, before it, you were it's, it's, um, It was a long time ago now, that, uh, with me being so young, it, it's still a long time ago. Um, <laughs> when I was about, uh, I was about 14, and uh, we came across a booklet in an abandoned house, you know, the the the, uh, uh, the spooky abandoned house. And it'd been abandoned for years, but there was lots of, of paraphernalia in there for booklets and stuff. And we found one that was, was all about uh, astral travelling. And uh, me and a friend of mine, we were we, we read it and we were really into, into it. And we thought, we'll keep trying to do this. And we kept trying and kept trying and, and nothing ever worked. And we couldn't get, we couldn't get get it to work properly. So um, I was waiting to to go out one, one early one evening to meet my friend, and, and I thought, well, I've got half an hour, uh, so I'll uh, I'll just have a go at this astral separation thing again. And I think because I wasn't expecting it to to work, and I was just relaxed, and I just wasn't really trying too hard. Um, it actually I, I separated, and I found myself travelling to my friend's house uh, and I went in through the, it was in the days when back doors were always open and I went in through the back door and I always used to call his mum and dad, mum and dad, because he, he, I always felt weird calling him Mr. and Mr. So, Mr. and Mrs. So I went in and, and uh, just popped my head around the living room door as I always did and went, hi, oh my dad. And, and then went up to my friend's room and I spoke to him and I said, this is really weird because I'm doing the astral traveling thing and he said yeah yeah whatever and I said no no I am really and he said no nah, no you, you, you're just having me on so then something uh, caught my attention and it, it, it was almost like like I said before it was like a an elastic band and it snapped me back really quickly and I, I, I felt myself just whizzing through the air and the next thing I was I was back in my room lying on the bed so I uh I jumped up off the bed and ran downstairs in the days before mobile phones. I had to use the house phone. And I, I dialed my friend's uh, number. His mum answered and I said, is he there? And she shouted him down. He came down to the phone and he said, how did you get home so quick? And I said, I was doing this astral traveling. And he said, no, no, no. I said, well, I'm phoning you from home. Phone me back. So he phoned me back on my number to confirm that I was at home. And he said, oh, no, you'll have to come round now. So I, I rode round to his house on my motorbike, which was about 10 minutes away by bike. And we had this, this, this long uh, discussion. And then we were trying to discover what we'd what I'd done differently uh, that time than any other. So he, uh, we got back to his house and he said um, that, well, first of all, I said, well, I was physically, I could physically see your mum and dad in the living room. Your dad was watching TV. Your mum was knitting away. And... Uh, then we went into the living room and he said, Dad, was Steve just talking to you? And his dad looked a bit confused and went, well, yeah, obviously. And they'd both seen me and so had my friend. And that's, that's one of only two occasions where I've astrally travelled where somebody's physically seen me at the other end. Uh, and I've never been able to, to discover to this day what the... the difference was so I could physically be seen I can astral travel all the time but let's say I've only been seen once and that was as a shadow then not as a not as a clear out, outline as a person but in that on that occasion they all three of them physically saw me in the house which is wow. which just blew my mind because you yeah. even told them what tv show the dad was watching didn't you say yeah, so dad was watching this tv and mum was was she was knitting away like say that i actually i spoke to the dad just said hi and he said hi and, and we had a quick word before i went upstairs and it, you know I could, we confirmed that that was the conversation so it was there was absolute confirmation that that they'd physically seen me which is uh, 
you know, it, it's incredible. And I, I, wish, I wish I could do it all the time. It saved me lots of travelling, going to work all the time, wouldn't it? So. <laughs> Would you uh, when they that? physically see you, are you like you are now? I mean, it's because I, you know, I mean, some people might think that if you're astral planning or astral traveling, you uh, look like a spirit or something. No, but from you, what they said, I was physic. It was physically me. I was there. They could physically see me, um, mm -hmm. and uh, that I've no no explanation for it. That's the most frustrating thing. Is I wish I knew what I did differently then. That, uh, so I could replicate it, but uh, yeah. but they, they said it was physically there. It wasn't. It wasn't like a spectre or just you know a see-through casting of a ghost or anything. It was. Uh, it was me physically there. So. So would you would you class that as um as a time slip, Steve? Do you think that that might be in like a time slip where we can manoeuvre time? Simply because no, no, really. I mean, quick. time slips. The, 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 there's lots of uh, as you know. There's lots of overlaps in in the the, the paranormal stuff where where we try and give everything a a, a specific name, mm. but, but I think there's lots of overlaps where it's a bit of one thing and a bit of another. And and I think the the, the time slip thing is is as we both as, you know we both experienced it. It's it's, it's just it, nothing changes in you just everything mm. around you changes and it's almost as if um somebody's just projected this thing all the way around you sort of like uh, when you see on these sci-fi programs where they, they, they have these virtual reality decks where you go on and the whole thing's all around you mm. and then when you walk back out of it you know like in my case when you walk back out of the shop and then all of a sudden everything's back to how it was originally and it's just um well, i think that's a slightly different thing i think that happens uh, spontaneously, whereas yeah. I think a lot of astral travel is is do, done with the intent of travelling uh, to that specific place. Yeah, because I, I have, well, I believe I have experienced a time slip um, in that I was driving down um, a particular hill to go, go into Feathers, um, and as I'm driving down the hill, um, it was like everything went really, really quiet. Um, and I didn't realise until after the event that everything was really quiet. Um, but it was like there was no traffic, no nothing, and the scene in front of me completely changed. And it went back to sort of the late eighteen hundreds, and I could see the shops really clearly. I saw a lady walk across the road. I could describe what she was wearing. I saw what shop she went into. I saw what they were making in the shop because they were uh, making ice cream actually in a really old-fashioned sort of churn thing um, but I could see everything really really clearly and then all of a sudden I was aware of sudden noise and I was back to being in the car and thing, yeah. yeah but it was completely quiet and that that was spontaneous I tried to recreate that but I've not been able yeah. to yeah yeah so I think that was definitely a time slip where I've slipped back in time with that yeah and I think sometimes it's uh, everything's got to be just uh, just right at that moment in time. You've got to be in the right frame of mind. Your energy's got to be right. The place where you're traveling through, it's got to be, and it's almost, it's like an amalgamation where everything just clicks together at that right moment. And yeah. that's why it's so, I think it's always difficult to, when, when you're trying to analyze it or replicate it, because you can't replicate the exact circumstances of that time or that energy or what, what was happening at that, that point in time. So but it's frustrating to, sometimes. But if people Sorry. want to astral travel, so, so the way to do it, you, you're saying would, the best way to do it would be to sort of uh, meditate and then try to project yourself from that. Yeah, there is a, there's a process. It, it, it's quite, it's, it's not a difficult to learn process, but it is, it, it is um, a practice thing where uh, you learn to relax first and then you learn to, to control the energy that's surging up and down your body. So you start to sort of almost control it in waves as if it's flowing up and down and up and down. So you gain complete control of it. And then once you've, you've gained control of it, then you can feel your own energy. And then, and then that's when you, you have more control over the energy and you can start to lift out of yourself. So like I say, it's not overly complicated. It's just the practice thing because it's a peculiar feeling when you first do it because... It, 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 the the energy you're not used to feeling the energy it's just there all the time you know it's like breathing in and out you don't consciously think about breathing yeah. in and out you just do it so the energy's there all the time and and you um 
you get this sensation of of all of a sudden you're more connected with your body than you've ever been because you can feel that energy you know moving about within it mm. so it's it like i say it's not it's not a difficult process it's just practice practice and and the, one of the most important things is you've not got to try too hard because if you, it sometimes it's a bit of a catch-22 you desperately want to do it so you're trying harder which makes it less likely that it's going to happen so and i think that's that's when when the, my first occurrence happened that's what i learned is that I, I wasn't bothered whether it happened or not i was just relaxing and and you know i was just chilling out and then the next thing is it, it, it all fell into place so it's it's about just really getting into that relaxed state and, and, and allowing it to happen. Wow. Would you, would you say that is um, the same as uh, remote viewing then, Steve? If you were to project yourself to a particular place, so you set an intent to be in a particular place, just like an experiment, just say, for example, uh, you decided that you want to go and have a look at the shops in the high street. Uh, and so you, you're thinking about astrally traveling to that place. So that's your intent, just yeah. as an experiment. Um, w would you say it, it's like, is that another word? Is that an, another phrase for astral travel then, to, to remote well, yeah, view? I think, I think remote viewing, there's, there's, there's the designation of remote viewing, which, which we're given to by, by scientists. Uh, and the, there's a... a two different types of remote viewing one's controlled remote viewing which is basically uh, the person doesn't have to do a, a, a meditation doesn't have to relax base the the crv as they call it is just they sit at a desk with a piece of in a blank room with a blank piece of paper and a pen and they just uh, allow their technically i suppose they allow, they allow their mind to connect to the place that they're going and then they just remotely start writing uh, the information down and then it, it can be confirmed or otherwise later and i think from from some of the information that i've read about the uh, um the the uh, american military that the uh, american in intelligence that when they did it they they had a program that was running from i think 1972 all the way up until 1995 and they spent billions on research because obviously it would be a great tool to you know if you didn't have to send a spy out uh, yeah. to, to see somebody if you could just send somebody remotely to to go into the you know to spy on the meeting or to get a document or whatever then yeah. uh it would be a, it would be undefensible for a start you know you, you couldn't defend against it because somebody could just pop in at any point um mm -hmm. but there the the other type of remote viewing is very similar to uh astral traveling where you they settle down they do a meditation they get relaxed but they're, they're given a specific point in time and place to go to wow. so it's uh coordinates uh, and a time when when they need to be there and this is where the the some people find it difficult to accept what, that you can travel within time and space but when we're we're, we're always it's always difficult because we're always thinking about us as physical beings we can't do certain things mm. but as energy beings the, the the rules are completely different you know unfortunately we don't have a rule book that says you can do this and you can't do that it's just a, you know it's a trial thing so but the, there's lots of evidence that that they got very successful results with remote viewing and being able to view and i believe that that, that at points they got 65 percent confirmed information that from stuff they picked up from a remote viewing uh, action hmm. uh, using uh, astral separation but uh, wow. the the thing that always gets me and, and people sometimes dismiss it as you know as, as a bit uh, a flight of fancy but the my uh, my thought is is the americans and and the russians both spent hmm. billions on researching it uh, and they wouldn't do that if they, did, they weren't getting any results. It had been, mm -hmm. soon been stopped if they were getting no positive results out of it. So true. Yeah. despite the fact that the Americans released, as they say, all their information in 1995, they only released, I think, what they wanted to release uh, just to get, because there was lots of people asking questions about it at that point. So to get people off the bat, they released, I think it was about 45,000 different documents just to you know to, to placate the the people that were asking all the questions 
but I think remote viewing it is it, it, for, from from their point of view it's been been used over and over again I think so. Mm. So if someone wanted to uh, to to do this if they were what was the best way to go about to practice this is it would you advise them to do that through meditation if they not particularly with the remote viewing but with astral uh, astral separation and astral travel? Yeah I think sometimes the 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 the, the mix of, of, of astral separation and, and remote viewing can come in quite handy because if you can if you can set something up in a room perhaps and then try and separate do ask do your astral separation then go into the room and see if somebody's moved something or they've put something on the center of the table or they've, they've put an object there or even a playing card or whatever then you can use that to to confirm that you know that that you're actually separating and you're traveling to that that place mm. so from from your own point of view that that would be a, a good confirmation and, and it would give you more confidence to to carry on on doing it and it also gives you a purpose and it's important to have a purpose when you when you sit down to ask travel because there's it's great it's like you know you could go out in your car and just go for a drive and you don't need to know where you're going but it's always easier if you know where you're heading for because then you yeah. know where, where to turn so yeah. it's always better if you ask to travel that if you if you have that uh, that intention right at the beginning and then i think uh, from my point of view, i always think that it's important to have somebody there with you because again that also gives you that confidence that you know even though if you know you're not going to get stuck that if you if you think you you might get delayed somewhere that somebody can just talk to you and bring you bring you back into the room so that you can get that yeah. you've got that connection with the physical plane then as well but yeah. it, it, i think it's important that that you practice meditation and then and then do it stage by stage and and sometimes i mean these days everything has to be done yesterday doesn't it so mm. if it takes longer than 20 minutes nobody's interested so it's it, it's a process where you you have to uh, practice the the meditation the relaxation and meditation bit first and then go on to the next bit which is the controlling of the energy and the waves and then and then go on to the and just keep doing it stage by stage until it, it's it's a natural process where you don't have to try too hard you don't have to focus on it because you're that practiced and it just it happens naturally so what it, it's really important you relax. the control of energy you're talking about the control of energy so that you, you bring in the energy from from like from the earth uh, and and you circulate the energy how, how do you mean bring in the energy well we draw you you draw it up and then the, en the energy that you've got you just push it just push it all the way up up to the your ground shack up to the top mm. of your head and then then push it back down again and it's sort of you you're learning to control the energy that you've got within you so that that flow allows it then to 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 be manipulated and and to allow you to start to to feel it as a separate thing to your physical mm -hmm. body and then once you've identified it as the separate thing that's when you can then start to learn to to lift it out and and sometimes it takes a few goes to to be able to when you feel your energy uh, lift out so you lift your arm out or you lift your leg and it, it's um that then allows you to 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 feel that separation and it is a peculiar feeling at first but it's not an uncomfortable feeling so it's just something that takes you by surprise the first time it happens normally when somebody does it they jump and then it the, their energy falls back in because it, they, they want it to happen but they're not expecting it to happen yeah so once you've come, got control of that energy yeah. it, it's uh, it's much easier to then separate from your your physical self but if, if everybody does get into astral traveling um it's going to put uh platforms like the one we're using zoom out of yeah. business because we we won't need to communicate like this yeah. <laughs> we'll just just astrally travel and go go to a meeting and and uh, all sit around the table astrally traveling yeah so it's uh, it may make uh, air travel a bit uh, useless as well then, wouldn't it? So yes, it would. Just visit wherever you want to go. Well, I, I know, Steve, that you were actually uh, did travel from one country to another, didn't you? You astrally travelled from England to Canada at one point. I did. Uh, um, when uh, Lisa, my wife, still lived in, in Canada, I, uh, I was astrally separating and I just thought, I wonder if I could, travel and see not in a not in a creepy way well <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> visit, visit and see uh, uh lisa and i traveled to a, a house and and uh, uh i visualized what was going on 
there. So when I came back out of there, I wrote as much as a, of it down as I could remember. Um, so I could then ask her to confirm. So I asked her what, what was happening at that time. And she went through it all. And I said, right, I'm going to send you something now, which is probably going to freak you out. And I sent her the, the, what, what I had already written down. And I, I'd seen her and she was, she was lying on, on the sofa having a nap. And she, she'd said about what she saw at the end. She thought it was because she was working with spirit and meditating. And she saw a, a shadow at the end of the sofa. And that's where I was stood looking at her. So that's the, se the only second time where, where I've physically been seen. But that time was just, it was just a dark shadow. She couldn't tell it was me. She could just see the shadow. And she thought, because she was meditating that, that it was somebody in spirit that was just coming in close. It and she married, you, she married you anyway. <laughs> hey, peeking. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> You know, when you were saying about the, um, the the energy moving and then you said to lift your arm out, you don't physically mean to lift your arm up, do you? You, you mean to bring the energy as if your arm's coming out. Yeah, so, the, so you, the, the, you, you flow the energy down into your arm then and the, so you, it's, you sort of, your energy arm, yeah. is, is, uh, and you lift your energy arm out. So your arm is is um, still flat on the, I normally do it the, either lying on a, on a bed or in a comfy chair because it just, it just allows you to completely relax. And then your energy arm will lift out or your leg can lift up. And sometimes it is, it is um, just to keep yourself in the zone so you're in between awake and sleep, so just so you don't drop off. Some of the methods suggest that you hold your arm up in the air so that you just that side of awake you know, between awake and asleep. So if you fall asleep, your arm drops and it brings you back into that in between rather yeah. than you, you, because obviously if you drop off, then, then your arm will drop. So, you know, if your arm's still up in the air that you, you, you're still, you know, uh, conscious. Yeah. And what about, um, you say somebody wants to, um, they want to dream and they want to astrally travel in dream state what intent should they set before they go to sleep? Sometimes with, with, between dream and, and astral separation, the, the, there's the, the, again, there's that overlap thing. But mm. um, there's, there's a difference between lucid dreaming uh, and astral separation because lucid dreaming really is, is uh, you're already asleep and you become aware in your dream that you're dreaming. So you become mm. conscious of the fact that you're in a dream. Yeah. Whereas astral separation, you, you're conscious of that at all times. Mm. So sometimes you can, like, like we said before, you can spontaneously uh, um, astrally uh, separate because you're in dreamlike state, so you're just in between. But it is normally when you're just in between awake and asleep rather than when you're completely asleep. Mm. And the, the, the easiest way to tell if you're lucid dreaming or whether you're astrally traveling is is to try and change something within your dream because obviously in dream state if you want you know if there's a i don't know if there's an apple on the side and you want to change it into a a, a watermelon or a you know a duck doesn't matter what what you want to change into you can do that in your in your dream mm -hmm. whereas it, when you when you astral travel you can only see the things that are there mm -hmm. so it's it's only it, it's it doesn't matter what you want to be there when you're actually traveling it's what's physically there is physically there you can't change it mm -hmm. so that's um that that's the easiest way to tell the difference because if you think well hang on i don't know if i'm dreaming now or whether i'm doing this really just try and change something obvious uh, and if it changes then you're obviously still in dream state that's not to say you can't then go on to astral separate because then you're conscious of the fact that you're in dream state so you, think right. you can then try and process and, and move forward that way but uh, but it's it's the easiest way to to identify you know if uh, if you go to the shop and the guy behind the counter all of a sudden has got a wolf's head it tends to be dream state not astral separation so. <laughs> Uh, I, I want to just bring in something else, unless Michael's got any more questions about uh, astral travel. Yeah. I, I would like to just bring uh, in uh, just a couple of more things that, uh, that I know uh, about you. And what, one of the, those is that you um, have a Cantonese guide that you work with uh, very closely, don't you? 
Yes, his name um, is Lao, and he's, Lao. he's very specifically Cantonese. Yeah. He gets very offended if you say he's Chinese because <laughs> uh, he he fought very strongly in his lifetime mm. uh, against the Chinese taking over Canton. So um, he uh, he's been with me. Actually, he, 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 I don't know if you remember, Jackie, he arrived the day that I arrived at Feathers, the first meditation I did at Feathers. Although he'd been there in the background, he stepped forward and he said, OK, now I'm working with you now. Um, and before that, I did a different guide that had been a, a little bit uh, less on my wavelength, whereas Lau has, has my sort of uh, sense of humour and, uh, and, and, and uh, my energy, I would suppose, really. Yeah. So we, we work really well together. And uh, he, uh, on the meditation uh, CD that we, that we have, it, uh, he dictated the music to me. Um, mm. And uh, it was, I, I was in the car and he said, this is your meditation. This is the music to go with your meditation. So he started singing. I said, well, I, 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 I don't know how I'm supposed to save this. So the only thing I could think was to put record on my pullover, I put record on my phone and he was singing it to me and I was singing it into the phone. So then I thought, well, I've got to get somebody to play this. So I phoned a friend of mine, Andy, and said, uh, this might sound really weird, this. But, and I told him the story that my guide had sung this song to me and I'd recorded it. And he said, no, no, it's not the weirdest thing I've heard. So I don't know what they heard in the recording studios, but, uh, but I played it to him and then we went through. And whilst he was playing it, Lau was saying to me, no, no, it needs to go slower there. It needs to go, it needs to go higher up. It goes up there, not down, it goes up. And all the way through till we got to the end of the, the piece of music. And when we recorded the the music and then put it we put it on the internet for people to be able to use and without any not no purpose whatsoever the the meditation music ended up being 11 minutes and 11 seconds long mm. <laughs> uh, and th that was th until we put it uploaded it we had no idea that's how long it was yeah. um and we've used it in workshops and meditations ever since and people say it's sort of um the music starts to relax you before you're even doing the relaxation because it it's almost uh, it almost matches the breathing pattern and just slows it down and slows your heart rate down as you're doing it and i find it uh, i can't play it in the car or anything because I, I find myself just going all relaxed and just <laughs> but it's but people have said it's it's the most relaxing piece of music and uh, uh it, it you know it was just sung to me by a cantonese guide <laughs> I love how he works with you in that way, because he's um, he got you to to do a different a different one, uh, didn't he, for um, a, a, a show uh, that you're still working on now. Was you still doing? Oh the yeah, yeah. On well, that show? <laughs> it was it was quite weird because at first when he first dictated to it, it didn't sound like it had any sort of oriental connection to it at all until we we played it to people and they said, oh yeah, you can hear the. Uh, the yeah. Chinese influence there and just went really and now after a while you listen to it and you can actually see it in that yeah. background but uh, he, he, he was very specific again as to to what uh, what he wanted to to, to, to be in the music and, and, and how it was supposed to go how fast it was supposed to go and the introduction at the beginning which uh, uh, the, there's a there's a, a voice at the beginning and then <laughs> and the music so to introduce it love it love, love working very with cool. It's, no, it's great, really. It, it, when, I, when I work with him, uh, you know, in, in other, when we do rescue work, and when we do mm. readings, like that, that um, he appears to me differently as well, because when we're doing serious work and it's, we know we're down to work and that we've got to get on with it now and it's very yeah. serious, he appears much older. Whereas when we're having a light-hearted moment, perhaps during a workshop and we're, we're having a bit of a, a, a laugh with the, the students and everything, that then he appears much younger because he's, he's a bit more mischievous then he's uh, you know and he, uh, he's more he's more sarcastic than 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 anything at that point when he's young oh very himself. suited to you he <laughs> yeah, gives gives me some of the own medicine yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah it's a different form of time travel really that isn't it if we think of time we think of time as 
as human beings we have times like we have the uh, it's time to go to work it's time to go to sleep it's time to get up we, so we, we we measure things by time but there's no time really in the universe or in the spirit world or anything because you're saying that sometimes love appears to you as a, a younger person with a different vibration and sometimes as an older uh, person so it's like he's skipping through time to give you the best of his advice at that particular time yeah he's, uh, i think um sometimes that that the the energy that he brings you can almost feel the difference you know where there's there's a there's a much more there's a lot higher energy when when he's when he's younger and he's mm. much calmer and and much more state uh, as he comes through as this old older person and he he really you, you can really feel the difference when he's when he's okay we're, we're working now serious we we need to concentrate on this one because that you know we, we've got got some work to do there could be a problem here we need to resolve this yeah. so that's, it, it's it's almost as if his calmness just reflects on me and then it it just makes you deal with things much easier much more easily because uh you you're calmer your energy's calm and and then the the energies that you're working with you know as you know pick up on that and the, and the calmer you are the calmer they'll be so makes things mm. easier mm. that's fascinating yeah do you, do you think you need um to have a, a, a your spirit guide there if you are practicing astral travel for example i mean uh i would say so but i i, I like life to be there when whenever i'm, I'm doing anything to do with the, uh, uh working with energy or spirit because i i trust his judgment completely if he said to me at any point during a, a you know an astral travel or an investigation or or you know any any anything at all if he said stop then mm -hmm. i would stop straight away because yeah. I, I trust his judgment completely and he knows more than i do because he, he's got a wider view than i have i can only see the physical world you know as he can see all aspects you know so he knows mm -hmm. sometimes what's coming that, that that we can't see you know and and as you know in, in rescues in the past you know our guides have said you know right just be careful now there's something coming that's quite negative yeah. and, and you, you're then prepared and we've gone to, to rescues before where we've arrived at the, the property and, and one of our guides has said okay extra protection on for this one mm. and and you know straight away that that there's something you know it's going to be a serious one so yeah you know, trust them completely and I think that that's part of the, the development as a as a medium or working with spirit is when you come to trust your guide completely and you know that they'll never steer you wrong mm. then you, you've you know you've, you've 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 got to the point where you don't need to question them if they say to you you need to say this you just know that you need to say it because that, that you can trust them completely yeah so it's um it's it's a uh, it's a relationship process as well and i think that's part of the thing sometimes with people is they forget that it's it's a two-way street you know mm. you can't just communicate with your guide when you want something you know so it's it's sometimes meditate and commune with your guide for no reason whatsoever just because you know it'd be like phoning up your friend and you only phone them up when you want to borrow something or when you yeah. want them to do something for you yeah you know it's uh it, it's you have to have that connection that relationship with your guide so that you know it, it's a two-way street so you both give in and, and receive from each other so mm -hmm. well i hope people that are watching this um do have some meditation aspects and see if they can astral travel because it will be a fascinating experiment for them yeah yeah, yeah I mean, there's lots of information there on the internet you just have to be careful about which bits you know be sensible and read read lots of them and, and sort of dismiss the the more uh, uh, out there uh, advice but most of them give you advice and hopefully shortly on the on the the, the feathers site and on, on uh, perhaps on the very paranormal we'll have a, a, a tutorial about how to go through the process of doing uh, uh, astral separation that would be great. And, that would be great. And, uh, so people can follow it uh, and uh, sometimes it's easier to, to see a visual rather than you know read somebody's notes about something just to because it mm. may give you that that connection doesn't it we're quite visual beings really aren't we we see, we learn things much easier if we can see somebody doing it so that's yeah. true so, yeah. yeah yeah 
Are you going to try, Michael? Are you going to try doing some astral travel? Yes, I will. I, I now I'm I'm really intrigued, so I will give it a try. Yeah. Well, if you want to pop across now, I'll put the kettle on if you want. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very good idea. And on that note, I think we should say thank you, Steve. It's been absolutely fascinating. And uh, we'd love to hear of, you know, people trying this and, and uh, they, they can write in, let us know how they get on. If they've got any questions for you, perhaps we can have you on again and we can talk about this and other subjects in the future. Yes, that'd be lovely. Thank you oh, very great. much for having me on. Okay, you're very, oh, very welcome. You. Okay, see you right. soon. Bye. Bye.